You're gonna die. Let's get this party started. Listen, if you're one of those people who thinks that parkour or people that do parkour are just crazy daredevils, just throwing crap that they don't know anything about, then you're wrong. <laughs> There's varying opinions even within the parkour community about whether parkour is really that dangerous or not. Most of them tend to say that it's not so dangerous, you know, because it's a skill that can be practiced and, and honed and uh, you can practice in safe environments, etc. Um, but then there's another part of the community that wants to say that it is very dangerous because, you know, that makes you look uh, pretty cool and makes you look pretty ballsy if you're attempting something that's so um, daredevilish. And to be honest, you do have to have somewhat of a wild streak to want to do parkour. So I wanted to get into that as well as show you guys a little bit of facts and statistics to look at this a little bit more objectively as to how dangerous is parkour really. Doing parkour is actually less dangerous than a lot of things that everyday people do in their everyday lives. And learning how to do it could actually save your life. There's always going to be an element of risk when you're, you're doing something uh, athletic, you know? And so I wanna talk about like different sports and different injuries and mostly I want to focus on deaths associated with sports um, because that is pretty much the main thing that people focus on when they talk about parkour like oh my gosh you're like jumping from building to building you know if you mess up you're gonna die you know you could die uh, while that's true the amount of deaths in parkour is significantly less than a lot of other sports that aren't necessarily considered even extreme sports so I did a lot of research and uh, looked up a lot of different sports deaths and in injuries and things like that. And uh, what I found is that uh, there's a lot of varying opinions about which sport is the most dangerous and has the most deaths. Most of the lists placed um, horseback riding, base jumping, motocross, and bull riding uh, at the top of the list along with gymnastics and cheerleading as well. And what I found is that horseback riding seems to be the number one most dangerous sport according to statistics. Now keep in mind that it also depends on how many people are doing the sport. Um, that can affect how many people die per year. So per 10,000 people who do horseback riding, about three die out of every 10,000, um, which is actually fairly high if you think about it. And there's several more people who are hospitalized um, doing horseback riding, and it's even higher for um, equestrian gymnastics, which is doing gymnastics while riding a horse, which is just insane, obviously, and I'm sure the people who do it love it, and uh, they have probably have similar feelings uh, that I do about parkour. So uh, I looked at a lot of different websites, but generally most of them agreed that about 20 to 30 deaths happen per year in uh, equestrian sports. And surprisingly, bull riding is actually uh, quite a bit lower than that. It's only about two to five deaths per year from what I could gather. Um, there are a lot of injuries associated with it, of course. And then base jumping is right up there with um, horse riding. And of course, you know, you can imagine why. <laughs> but let's get to the parkour statistics. So with parkour, it's a little bit harder to find uh, statistics on. Uh, especially injuries because a lot of them aren't reported you know uh, us parkour guys we don't tend to go to the hospital um, even when we should <laughs> and uh, I, I looked at several different sites to uh, look up you know death rate per year and there wasn't really a clear um, death rate per year calculated and but I did happen upon a lot of articles that were you know reporting these these ghastly parkour deaths and I read into them, um, you know, from CNN to BBC to Independent UK and Daily Mail uh, about all these parkour deaths. And several of them, in my opinion, uh, were very preventable. And looking at the dates, um, it was one per year or less. The reason that I say preventable is because a lot of them involved very young practitioners, um, new to the sport, 
So I found two different articles that were about 17-year-olds, uh, and uh, you know this is this is very sad, you know, because whatever community that they were in um, encouraged them to do something that was outside of their skill range, that was high risk, and uh, obviously these deaths involved jumping from buildings, um, which you know I don't do a lot of. I think that it, it comes down to knowing your limits, you know, and also two out of the. Um, five that I've seen. I was only able to find five um, actual parkour deaths and two out of them were when people were drunk. The other two were 17 year olds. Um, interesting age, you know. Um, you're, you're probably very impressionable at that age. Um, obviously doing anything while you're drunk um, increases the risk, you know, driving a car uh, whether you're a NASCAR driver or not. And then the other one was this daredevil guy who loved to do backflips on top of skyscrapers. And to me, that's just stupid. <laughs> you know, there's no point in doing a backflip on top of a skyscraper unless you're trying to tempt fate and tempt death. Wow, and the only reason to do it is to get Instagram followers, um, which you know, he had a ton of Instagram followers, but he ended up dead, which sucks. Um, so the moral of the story here is uh, don't be stupid, you know. There's different levels of risk when it comes to parkour, and you gotta start at the bottom and decide what's important for you. How much risk are you willing to take? And, you know, part of my philosophy is like, you know, you could die any day doing any normal thing. A lot higher deaths happen per year from car accidents. And we see that as a pretty mundane, normal thing to do is drive a car. But everyone knows that you have to obey the rules of the road and you have to be smart about it. You know, you can't just try to text and drive or be drunk and drive. You're not gonna see anybody doing parkour and uh, text at the same time. Um, Except for that one guy who does it as a joke. <laughs> Can't remember his name right now, I'll look it up. Obviously that's that's ridiculous to do. Um, and depending on who your instructor is, you know, if you're thinking about going into parkour or putting your kids into parkour, I would highly encourage it. Because usually when they have an instructor and it's a legitimate, you know, thing, a legitimate facility, or if, or if you know this person, you know, and you know that they're, they're focused on safety, um, that's going to influence the people who are taking the class and, and taking parkour lessons. You know, because they are going to learn uh, discipline and what their instructor teaches them. So earlier I talked about how parkour could potentially save your life. Parkour and learning different techniques has definitely prevented injury for me. Parkour, it's about overcoming obstacles and getting from point A to point B with efficiency. Now, in a life-threatening situation like a fight, a street fight, or a mugging, or like things like that, um, where you have to either fight or run, you know, these things can really help you. And if you aren't taking risks while you're training parkour, then you're not really training your mind to accept different kinds of risks and different kinds of realities that could happen um, out of nowhere and how how you respond in a situation that would cause you to have adrenaline and fear going through your body you know training your body to respond with quickness and determination rather than you know breaking down and going blank or being in the fetal position you know uh, is very important so there's a level of risk that I think um, can be necessary in your parkour training um, because if you're getting chased by someone, someone who's trying to do you harm, when you come up to that gap or that, that thing that's in your way um, that could be fearful or jumping down off of something high or escaping a fire, if you can't handle that fear in that moment, uh, then yeah, it could be life or death. And obviously, how are you going to survive the zombie apocalypse if you don't know parkour? I mean, it's just not feasible. It's really, it's, it's just not, don't even try it. <laughs>